If you want to support the platform, just in case anything like this happens again, you can do it by way of PayPal, Patreon, uh, Cash App, and also by um, the Anchor. And you can also further support the platform by way of going to the uh, the Teespring store or um, the shoe store that is located in the comment section below. It never fails. Every video I make, there is a constant stream of butthurt white women and sometimes white men in my comment section saying that I'm stirring up racism because I'm holding us to account when here is the reality. A Mississippi teenager has been arrested on murder and aggravated assault charges after a incident took place at Bay St. Louis house party which left two teenagers erased and four others hospitalized. Cameron Everett Brand, age 19, was identified as the sole individual at the party that took aim. Bay police officers responded to the home in the 100 block of Old Blue Metal Road at around 12.34 a.m. and found multiple people suffering from gunshot wounds and others were taken to a local area hospital in personal vehicles. The six victims are between the ages of 15 and 18. Two of the victims are students at Bay High School in Bay St. Louis. Four of the students attended nearby Hancock High School. Four of the victims were taken to a hospital in New Orleans or Sidel via a life flight helicopter. Two of the teens being treated at the University Medical Center in New Orleans past Sunday morning. They were 16 and 18, but their identities have not yet been released. Brand was arrested at his home in Pass Christian without incident. He is held in Hancock County Jail without bond, which was set by Municipal County Judge Stephen Maggio. Hancock High School posted a comment on Facebook, quote, Our hearts are broken as we mourn the tragic loss of two Hancock High School students who were victims of an incident in Bay St. Louis last night. Our hearts are with their families, friends, and the school staff during this incredibly difficult time. Please keep them along with the others who are injured from Hancock and Bay High Schools in your thoughts and prayers. To our students and staff, please know that there will be support services available at the high school tomorrow to help you through this. Let us come together as a community to show our support and love during this very difficult time. Now, the interesting part is that when I happen to look up this story, right, you type in Cameron Brandon, right, you see um, two erased, four wounded, right, you count about CNN, um, a local news agency, Sun Herald, um, Mead, uh, what, MSNBC, WDS, you count you know, quite a news or quite a few news organizations uh, that are actually covering this. But the most interesting thing is how you're not hearing or seeing of any parents coming directly out and stating that, hey, we need to really do something about this. We are losing our kids. Our kids are being injured. Um, you know, we have these types of things in our community that are ongoing. We have disputes and, you know, our kids need to really learn how to talk it out and different things of that nature. You don't hear any of that taking place. You don't hear anything of the parents, right, of the individual, as they are going to more than likely state, that decided to do this. They didn't list any type of motive. They didn't say that, hey, this person um, was being talked about at school or talked about online. This person reached a tipping or breaking point. Uh, this person was going through some type of emotional uh, withdrawal or uh, they were a recluse or they were an outsider. Uh, this person was on, you know, some type of narcotic or so. You're, you're not hearing none of this. All they simply told you is the fact that he decided to go to this house party. He saw some people there and he decided to take aim at a multitude of people there, uh, taking the lives of two and then injuring four. And yet, for whatever reason, police were like, you know what? Even though this directly took place, let's quietly and peacefully arrest him at his home. And then 
let's carefully take him from his home to the cop car, from the cop car to the precinct, to the precinct where he's being held, to then, you know, in front of a judge. And then after being in front of a judge, now he's going to be held. So you mean to tell me that you know that this is the person that directly did this to the people there? With no motive at all. Like I said, I'm not looking for an excuse to justify the reason of why it is that he did what he did. I'm stating the fact that you have a motive, which is he went to a party. You don't really need anything else other than that. There's there's, there's nothing else to look for that because nowhere in the story did it state that, okay, well, he went to this party and, you know, some people decided that they wanted to jump him. Some people decided that they wanted to gang up on him. Again, he went there with a weapon. He went there with an intent. He went there to that party, and that's the motive. Weapon, going to party, group of people deciding to take aim at any and everybody that is there. That's motive enough for me. And for him to be allowed to get safely picked up and magically for the police, for whatever reason, after this incident took place, to not find him as a threat, not stating anywhere in the article that they made a show of force directly at his home after this incident took place, that speaks volumes. Because to me, this person is not only a threat to himself and his family and, and, and to the community, but he would be a threat to the officers that are involved. Because of the potentiality. It's not to, realistically, it's not even a potentiality. It's the actions that he already initially took. So who's to say that the actions that he already initially took, he wouldn't apply those same uh, same exact actions elsewhere. But yet again, when you go through these articles, you go through these stories, you don't hear anybody talking about that they feared for their life when going to get the suspect directly from the home and putting handcuffs on him and, and on all of these other things. You don't hear any of this. Like I said, this is this is ridiculous. This is 1000 percent ridiculous. No parents out here should ever have to worry about their kids going out to a party, going out to meet friends and then having this happen. Just think about that as a parent or as a guardian. Right. Or, or maybe you have like a younger sister or brother. Just imagine them telling you they're leaving out the door. It's like, all right, you know, love you guys. I'll be back, you know, a little bit later. I'm going out to a party. Right. And then you think that the person is going to be back because that's the same routine every single day, even though every day realistically, technically is random. And just on this day, when everything seems to be how it's going to be or how it's going to play out every single day, a variable is dropped directly in front of your child or directly in front of your brother or your sister. And it's Cameron Everest Brand, age 19, deciding that he's going to go to a party where all of these people are. Now, he could have opted to stay home. He could have opted to be on PlayStation, Xbox, PC. He could have opted to go fishing. He could have opted to, to go to the store, to go to a McDonald's, to get something to eat and then go to sleep. But that's not what he wanted to do. He decided to go to the party where your child or where your younger brother, or where your younger sister is. He decided to take aim at anybody who was there. Just imagine how you would feel if this was one of your family members, if this was your child. And the main thing that I want people to understand, again, I'm going to keep saying this like a broken record. These incidences that keep taking place, the government, the state, local, whoever, they're going to compile all of these incidences as evidence, as factual proof, as indisputable. And they're going to use this culminate, in combination and combination of all of these and it's going to culminate into one thing where they're going to pass these laws and they're going to do whatever it is that they can in order under the disguise of quote unquote keeping your kids safe, keeping the community safe, keeping everybody safe, they're going to pass a lot of drastic laws. And you're going to have a time and a point in America where people are not going to be able to actually properly defend themselves. And again, I want people to understand this. 
right? Cameron Everest Brand, age 19, was able to get his hands on a weapon. They didn't identify how it is that he got it, if it was illegal, if it was legal. They didn't state if it was a parent, if it was a friend, if he brought it off the street, if he just found it in the sewer. They didn't state anywhere of which he got that weapon from, but we all know that he got it. And that's how most criminals who actually have the intent of doing something bad, that's just how they get it. It just, you know, drops out of the sky. Right. So, again, you have to ask yourself when it is that they pass these laws. When it deals with weapons and when it deals with you being able to actually properly protect yourself and your family, who specifically are these laws tailored for? Are they made for the criminals who are consistently able to find and, and, and get these weapons every single time and do the things that they naturally want to sit up there and do? Or are they for everyday people who can pass a psychological advance, uh, I'm sorry, test? who can, you know, pass the whatever course it is in order to get your license and then go to, you know, the range and, you know, be able to buy these these weapons. So who who are they passing these laws for specifically? Is it for people like him or is it for people like you? Like I said, I'm trying to get people to critically think. Now, you can say that I'm completely wrong in the comment section. I could possibly be. I could just be, you know, very simply a talking head online, just a conspiracy theorist, just trying to spread misinformation, right? Or there could be some validity to the things that I'm stating if you follow the very obvious truths and cookie crumbs that the media and the government is putting directly in front of you. Because the one main thing that they've stated before is that it'll get to a point in time that the government can put the truth directly in front of the people and they won't care. And we've already started at that point. So again, do your own research to find out if what I'm stating is true or not. And you can, you know, clearly call me out in the comment section. 